So, have you ever made chala bread? Well, the answer is no, because it's actually. So yes, challah, that is what we are making today. A traditional Jewish bread, a little bit like a brioche, but not quite as rich. Uh, and particularly this recipe, because it's parve, I believe it's pronounced, which means it contains no meat or dairy. So no butter in this, but we're gonna be enriching it with olive oil alongside our honey and eggs. So this is a beautiful loaf. It's the braiding that makes it look so special. Actually making it is fairly easy, but the tricky part is that plaiting, but we will get to that. So for this recipe, you're gonna need 500 grams of strong white bread flour, seven grams of instant yeast, or a sachet if that's what you're using, 10 grams of fine sea salt, then 30 grams each of extra virgin olive oil and honey, two large free range eggs, and then for the liquid, you need 200 grams of water. So very simply, all into the KitchenAid and mix, well needed for about five minutes. If you haven't got a KitchenAid, you can mix this by hand and then knead it for five to 10 minutes. So all the ingredients into our bowl. That is pretty full. Flour, yeast, salt, olive oil, honey, and if you like it a little bit sweeter, you can always add a little extra honey, then your two eggs, one, two, and then in with the water, and then, like I say, mix for about five minutes, start it off on a one speed, and then you can turn it up to a two or a three. Okay, there we go, it's come together nicely, looking smooth and a little bit shiny. So we're just gonna scrape that off the dough hook, like so. And then you wanna just cover that with a sheet of cling film or a tea towel. And we're gonna leave that to proof at room temperature for just one hour, because then actually we're gonna take it out give it a sort of fold or a little uh, second kneading and then leave it to proof for another hour. So one hour and I'll show you what to do next. All right then, so that's been an hour and as we can see, the dough's probably only grown by about 50% but don't worry, this isn't the end of the bulk proof. We're gonna leave it for an another hour but first we just wanna do like a little set of almost stretch and folds just to kind of knock the dough back bring it into a ball shape, and then we can leave it for the second proof. And this is really gonna help with the crumb structure, give you a nice smooth crust, and also just help with the overall shaping of the loaf. So a little bit of flour, and we'll tip this up. If you haven't got time, I guess you could skip this stage, but in my experience, you will end up with maybe a slightly denser uh, crumb at the end and also the loaf is prone to uh, expanding, maybe in not quite such a uniform way. So just go around, pulling it out, the sides out, and then tucking them back into the middle. Use your dough scraper to keep it um, from sticking to the worktop. So out and in, out, in, out, in, out, in. And just go around a few times, it'll pull it together into a nice ball like that. And then you could just put it back into the KitchenAid bowl, but I'm going to put it in here because I need to mix up some more dough for some other bread. So I'm going to pop that in there, cover it with cling film again. And now we're going to leave that for another hour or until it's almost reaching the top of the bowl, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so that's had another hour. As you can see, the dough has puffed up nicely, and we are now at the stage where we are ready to shape. 
So Hala, of course, is all about that impressive braid. Now you've got plenty of options. You can go for a simple three plait if you're a five-year-old girl, or you can try doing a four plait like I've shown previously in my brioche recipe, so do check that one out. But today we're going to go bold and we're going to do a six plait. So it sounds a bit intimidating, but don't worry. I'm going to talk you through it, show you the steps, and you will be able to get this down. So the first thing you need to do is obviously divide your dough into six equal pieces. So let's just peel that off. A little bit of flour. Tip the dough out. Lovely stuff. Nice and fluffy. There we go. We'll put a little flour on top. And then we can use our dough scraper just to cut it in half. And then each of those into three. I'll give them a way up. Five minutes later. There we go. So you're looking at about 150 grams per strand. So we kind of need to do a little pre-shape. So just basically pull the bit of dough out into a rectangle like that, only roughly, and then just roll it up and that'll sort of pre-shape it into a sausage cylinder ready for you to roll out. So we'll do that with all of them. A few moments later. Okay, there we go. So we've got our six roughly shaped strands. And now just leave them for about 10 minutes. You could just cover them with a tea towel to stop them drying out. That'll just allow them the dough to relax again and it's going to make it easier to roll. So just 10, 15 minutes. Okay then, so our dough has had time to relax a little. If you try and do it straight away, you might just find that the dough resists you and you're going to really struggle to stretch them out into nice strands. So now it's just a case of gently, let's start with this one, gently roll your hands over it and then pull them apart to stretch it out like so. Try not to crush it down too much, we're just being gentle, so it's just a case of rolling and rolling and eventually it will get there. That one's looking fine. If you see you've got like a fat bit, just roll on that bit. There we go. And do the same with all of them. Five minutes later. There we go. Six equal lengths. And now the fun bit really begins because we've got to plait them. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to bring your six strands next to each other and then at the top you just want to pinch them all together. Here we go. So just put them all on top of each other, pinching them in like so. Then you want to get the two outside ones and you're going to bring one to the right, like so, and the other one to the left. So now, the four that are coming down, you want to split them into two groups of two, like that. And that's really going to help you keep on top of where everything is. So now as we can see, this bit of dough is at the top, because it passes above this one. So this will be the one we start with. So you want to pick it up and you're going to bring it down in line with the two on the left, making a group of three, but you only ever want two on each side at the bottom, so you take the outside one and that goes back up to the top. So basically you're always going to have two coming down at the front like this, and one each side in a horizontal line. So now we can see this piece of dough is the one closest to the top, so you're going to take that and bring it down in line with the two on the right. But once again, we've got three here and we only want two. So you're going to take the outside one and bring it up and that one goes horizontally. And now it's just a case of repeating that process all the way down. So this one's at the top, bring it in line with the three on the left. 
you don't want three, you only want two. So send that one up to the right. Top left, down, out to the left. Top right, down, out to the left. Top left, down, and out, right, and over, left, and over, right, over, left, over, right, over. And now we've reached the end, so you've got, uh, you can bring that one down, and then you can probably just stretch that one over. I'm going to move the whole thing up, so you can see. So pinch all these together, give them a bit of a squeeze, you can use the palms of your hands to flatten them, and then that's just going to make them easy to tuck under. So lift it up and just fold them under. That's going to give you a nice neat end if I pull the whole thing down again. And that is our finished plaited loaf. So now you just want to transfer this onto a baking tray lined with some parchment paper, some baking parchment, like that. So if you just use the whole of your arm, you can kind of scoop it up, move it across, and then you want to give this a coating of egg wash now. So in a bowl here, I've just got one egg beaten up, nothing in it, no milk, water, salt, just plain egg. And now give it a liberal uh, coating of the egg wash, and that's just going to stop it drying out. Lovely. So now we'll leave that to proof for probably somewhere around 40 minutes to an hour. Again, it always depends on the temperature of your house. What I would do is halfway through that, so in about 20 minutes, I'll give it another coating of egg wash just to stop that drying out and then we'll give it one more coat before it goes in the oven. So let that prove 40 minutes to an hour and then I'll show you how to bake it. Okay then, now that's only been 40 minutes but we're puffed up and looking ready to bake. I've got my heating on so things are moving on a little bit quicker than usual. But like I say, if your house is cool, it could take anything from 45 minutes to 60 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer. If you underproof this when you bake it, you may find that the plaits kind of tear apart in the oven, or worst case scenario, the whole loaf lifts up and it bursts from the bottom. Classic sign of underproofing. If you overproof it a bit, then it may just have a slightly wrinkled, deflated look to it, but out of the two, that would be my preference. But once you bake this a couple of times, then you will be able to gauge that level of proof perfectly and it won't be a problem. So I've got my oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 360 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've also got a roasting tray preheating in the bottom of the oven. So when I put this in, I will tip in a glass of water to the roasting tray and that will generate steam uh, and I'm going to leave that to cook at that high temperature for about 10 minutes. Then I will turn the oven down to 160 degrees Celsius, 320 Fahrenheit, and continue to cook it for another 30 minutes. That will give us 40 minutes total cooking time. But keep an eye on it, because with the honey and the egg in there and the egg wash, these do tend to brown quite quickly. And if you see that happening and it's getting darker than you'd like, then I suggest just laying um, a little tent of foil over the top and that should stop it getting too dark. So before it goes in, we just want to give it one final egg wash. And be careful this time because the dough is really light and puffy, so you don't want to be deflating it. So just gently going over it. There we go. Now, you could sprinkle some sesame seeds or some poppy seeds on this. They're both traditional, however, no one in my house particularly likes them. They all fall off in the bread bin and get everywhere, so I'm just going to bake this one plain. Now, as always, I will get it baked, get it out of the oven and cooled, and then we'll be able to slice into it and have a little taste up. And here we have it, the final loaf. Look at that, come out really well, lovely shape, still a little bit warm, but I want to cut into it, A, because the children are going to be home from school soon, but B, I simply can't wait. It looks 
fantastic. Feels really light, so I'm interested to see what that crumb is like inside. So let's cut through this end here. And look at that. Oh, that is, dare I say perfect, I won't, but it's absolutely beautiful. Really light, airy, nice open crumb. Let's cut a little slice so we can have a taste. I'm a bit of a roll at the moment with my bakes. So, tears beautifully. Like I say, still a little bit warm, but that's lovely. Mmm, wonderful. Chewy, light, absolutely delicious. Like I say, sweetness from the honey. You can taste that olive oil, so use a good extra virgin olive oil because you want the flavour from it. But really, the big achievement is getting it so light uh, with that open crumb inside. Often sort of decorative breads like this can be a bit style over substance. By the time that dough's been worked so much, rolled, shaped, you end up with a really good looking thing, but on the inside it can be a little bit dense, you've still got the lines where the dough hasn't sort of proofed back together again. But this, it's a win-win, it's the best of both worlds. Looks fantastic, tastes fantastic, and the texture is wonderful. And that really comes down to that two-stage proofing process. Doing the extra kneading or the stretch and folds between just helps with that crumb structure, helps with that smooth shiny crust and with the overall shape of the loaf. And you don't just have to do it for this recipe, you can use it on any standard bread dough recipe and it will just give you a really nice shape loaf with a great crust. So even if you don't try this, try that tip, but come on. I urge you to give this a go. Bring that out to family and friends and they cannot not be impressed. So that's the end of the video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Keep subscribing to the channel. Uh, and until next time, Shalom Havelin and happy baking.